Hey friends, I'm Sharon Betters and welcome to the Daily Treasure Podcast produced by Mark Inc. Ministries. I hope that if you are enjoying our Daily Treasure Podcast, if God is using it to touch your heart, that you will leave a review, that you will tell your friends about it, pass along the information for how they too can listen, even mention us on social media. You are the ones that are going to help us spread the word and we really appreciate your response and you taking on the challenge of inviting others to join you on this journey. I know of uh, friends who listen to it and then when they walk later in the morning, they'll talk about what they heard and how it applies to their lives. So we are showcasing the scriptures in this podcast and we pray that your heart would be tender toward what God has for you today. Today's devotional is called, Who Can You Trust? And today's treasure is from Psalm 62, verses 9 and 10. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances, they go up. They are together lighter than a breath. Put no trust in extortion. Set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart on them. When the world shifts beneath your feet, on what or whom do you turn for help? What about in the mundane moments of life? On what do you set your hopes? David not only exhorts his soul to trust in God alone, he identifies some of the things in which he had previously trusted and warns readers to recognize the futility of such trust. He says, don't depend on people for everything. Psalm 62, 8a. Those of low estate are but a breath. David knew from experience that today the crowds might be cheering but the next they are plotting. Jesus himself experienced the flightiness of people. One day they waved palm branches, welcoming him as king. The next they screamed, crucify him. Finding our safety and identity in the shouts and flattery of the multitude is shaky ground. Perhaps you put your faith and trust in government, politicians, the educated, the decision makers in our community or country or wealthy people who have the power to lift you up. David warns us this is like trusting in smoke in Psalm 62, 8. Those of high estate are a delusion. How many times have elected officials disappointed supporters? What about the educational system, entertainers, or star athletes? Perhaps your trust is in your employer, expecting fair treatment and advancement based on ability and experience. David tells us to lower our expectations because these people and institutions are flawed. Reliance on them disappoints us even more when they fail to deliver as promised. And what about wealth? Surely we can trust our investments to carry us through the rest of our days. Psalm 62.10 begs to differ. Put no trust in exhortion. Set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart on them. David calls out those who oppress the poor, who lord their wealth and power over those less fortunate, and who do not use their wealth to help those less privileged. He condemns those who build up their portfolio with ill-gotten gain and cheating others, individuals, employers, businesses of their possessions. He does not condemn saving and preparing for the future financially, but he warns us to do so with care. Work hard, save, and prepare but be sure your hope is in God, not money. Understand that in the blink of an eye, all of it could be gone. Our great-grandparents witnessed the crash of Wall Street in 1929. Those who put their trust in money quickly learned that trust was an illusion. Men killed themselves, concluding they had no hope without their money. Those who put their trust in God had a foundation on which to stand, able to go forward, trusting that the Lord would take care of them. I admit, I am challenged by David's cautions. Where is my heart? Is it solely resting on God as my rock, rest, rescue, and refuge? In the treasury of David, Charles Spurgeon admonishes us. The more we rely upon God, the more shall we perceive the utter hollowness of every other confidence. To be laid in the balance, they are altogether lighter than vanity. Take a true estimate of them. Judge them neither by quantity nor by appearance, but by weight, and they will no longer deceive you. Calmly deliberate, quietly ponder, and your verdict will be that which inspiration here records. Vainer than vanity itself are all human confidences, 
the great, and the mean alike are unworthy of our trust. A feather has some weight in the scale, vanity has none, and creature confidence has less than that. Yet such is the universal infatuation that mankind prefer an arm of flesh to the power of the invisible but almighty creator. And even God's own children are too apt to be bitten with this madness. As we must not rest in men, so neither must we repose in money. Gain and fame are only as much foam as the sea. All the wealth and honor the whole world can afford would be too slender a thread to bear up the happiness of an immortal soul. May each of us carefully ponder David's wisdom and firm words. May we too command our souls with the words of David in Psalm 62, 1. For God alone, my soul waits in silence. From him comes my salvation. And O Lord, may our prayer every minute of every day be, for you alone, my soul waits in silence. From you comes my salvation. Friends, how incredibly grateful are we to know that he alone is our salvation. And I got to tell you, as I'm recording this devotional, I'm, I'm kind of cringing a little because I know how much I struggle with some of these things. Uh, I'm 74 years old and I praise God that the struggle is not as deep as it was when I was in my 20s and 30s, that he has opened my heart to those places where I was clinging to things that were worthless to cling to, that I could not trust in. And yet I have to admit, in today's world, uh, sometimes as I'm watching the news I and I think about past betrayals and current betrayals as I watch what is happening to people that I love as friends are betraying them and hurting them, I, I do have to step back and say again, Lord, am I really trusting you? Am I really being still before you? You live in the same world I do. You're watching the same news that I'm watching. And it is crushing sometimes, isn't it? Recently, I was watching the beginning of a baseball game and this beautiful young artist sang God Bless America. And as she was singing, I began to cry and I couldn't stop crying. And I thought, what in the world is going on? Because I love America and it was beautiful. The song was beautiful. And then I realized my tears were not truly tears of joy about America, but it was of a broken heart. I was crying because our beautiful country seems to be destroyed from the inside out. And then I thought about the Ukraine and things that are happening there and across our world, third world countries, and my heart is just breaking. And I think, Lord, how long? Jesus, come quickly. In the meantime, what is he telling us? He's saying, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come into this waiting room. Wait on me. I will fight this battle for you. Friends, thanks so much for joining us for the Daily Treasure Podcast. We are hopeful that these devotionals are helping each one of us walk by faith wherever God has placed us. But you know, there are times when we need more than a devotional or a Bible study or even a friend walking with us. We need more counseling from an objective person who is focused on what the scriptures teach about our situation. And if you are in that place or you have a loved one who is in that place, I want to encourage you to check out Anchored Hope biblical online counseling. You can go to markinc.org, M-E-R-K-I-N-C.org, where you can browse the counselors. You can pick out a counselor and then meet with that counselor in the privacy of your own home. Again, that's Anchored Hope Biblical Online Counseling. Go to markinc.org, M-E-R-K-I-N-C.org to check it out. Thanks so much for joining us, and I look forward to being with you tomorrow.